Hello my friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I wanted to come on and do another Soul Tribe reading. I know I just did one yesterday and I know that I've started not doing them so often but there's something about those Soul Tribe readings and all your beautiful comments. You are all such loving, supportive spirits and I just I love all of your energy and oh, so many of you. You're just so beautiful and I don't even know if you realize it. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, a lot of you asked about that gratitude journal. So first of all, as soon as I'm starting this reading, I'm starting to experience like that hot flash that I always talk about and I'm not talking about menopause. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, burning off karma, um, burning off karmic debt. Um, you know, there's a thing that some people believe that we, as the, as the black sheep who are trying to change, um, generational cycles and heal generational trauma, that we have accumulated our we've accumulated like generational karmic debt so you could be you know you could be someone who's burning off some of that karmic debt I know I am um, seriously anytime you have that rush of heat come over you think about it you know think about what you're changing think about what you're healing um it's such a muggle mindset to be like, oh, you're just going through menopause. <laughs> I assure you, I am not. Anyway, um, I felt, you know, I had a rough day yesterday, but I felt so uplifted. I, I just love soul tribe readings. And again, the energy that you give back to me is beautiful. So many of you were concerned about me coming off of meds, um, going cold turkey. I've actually been trying to come off meds for years, um, so I've been slowly tapered off of them. But this is, you know, the final hurdle where I'm not on them. So thank you for, you know, everyone who... It just, you have such unconditional support in you, I just can't even explain it, you know? Um... I kind of touched on it yesterday that that's what I've been manifesting into my life. And I've been wondering, where is it? And Spirit's like, it's right in front of you. <laughs> like, it's all those people who are showing you that unconditional support. Um, it's beautiful, you know? It's beautiful. Um, high vibrational energy, my friends. So, <laughs> I have a lot I want to say. <laughs> Uh, before I did this reading, I was sitting outside and I was talking about, so interesting, I was talking about, um, with a friend of mine, we were texting and we were talking about our parents and some of the cycles that they were repeating and a dragonfly landed on my leg. And I was so, at first when it landed on my leg, I didn't know what it was. And I like went to, sh I like sh went like that to my leg. And then I looked down and it was a dragonfly. And I don't know if you guys have ever had a dragonfly land on you. But apparently if you're not around water, it's not that common of a thing. And there's spiritual significance um, behind it. And I remember, oh, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. But I was sitting outside and I had a dragonfly that would not, like, it kept coming and landing on my knee. And then it would leave and it would come back. And I had all this picture, all these pictures of a giant dragonfly on me. Um, anyway, a dragonfly landed on me this morning. And that's kind of what I was talking about in that Soul Tribe reading. Like if you follow the magic, if you allow the magic to happen and you follow the signs from the universe, the universe shows you more. Um, and that was a perfect example and immediately like that's like the highlight of my day a dragonfly landing on my leg you know and I think about all these people who are in that rat race you know not focused on those types of moments and how unfulfilling that I used to be that it's unfulfilling anyway I don't know what I'm, I'm I don't know what I'm going on about now but um 
a lot of you asked about that journal. Um, this, I, I took my time picking a journal. Anytime I pick a crystal, a tarot deck, <laughs> a journal, I wait for the right one to speak to me. And I know that sounds crazy. Even when I used to buy plants, I would wait for the right plant to, you know, pick me. <laughs> um, so I took a long time picking this journal and it is, a, it's, uh, this gratitude journal and I'm serious. I've been using it for like a week and I'm noticing a difference every day in myself. Um, it, like I said, it really, no, I'm not selling it. It really does trigger you to kind of think about these things. Think about the lessons you're learning, the small lessons in each day. And, you know, once you start practicing gratitude, like I said, you start to be grateful for everything that happens, like a dragonfly landing on your leg. Um, anyway, it's Clever Fox Gratitude Journal. And again, I have no regrets buying it. So... Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was somebody left a beautiful comment yesterday about how I kind of made them realize something about love and about how we do put romantic love on a pedestal and that we should normalize loving ourselves, choosing ourselves. And this morning I came across a quote from the show You, which I know is about a stalker. <laughs> But just this line, it was about how trust, when your intuition is telling you you deserve better, trust in that because that is your relationship with yourself and you are your own true love. So if, you know, if that voice inside of you is telling you that you deserve better and that the situation you're in or whatever is not, you you deserve better, it's not it's not fulfilling you, listen to that voice because by not listening to that voice, you lose that voice. Um, anyway, I'm doing a horrible job explaining it. And again, try to take out, I'm going to, I'm actually going to add it to this video, but try and take the context of the show out of it because the show is about a stalker. So just try and take that away from it. <laughs> but it really, I found it very powerful. So again, I'm going to pause the reading here and I'm going to add that video so that you can see it because it just made me truly think again I am I am I am in a relationship with myself right now you know like I am getting to know myself I am putting my own needs first I'm not in a selfish way you know I have children I can't <laughs> I can't just forget that um anyway Again, not sure what my point is, but I recently started coloring again, which I did when I first awakened years ago, and then I stopped, and I've really been enjoying it, and especially where, you know, I'm struggling with those brain zaps, it gives me something to focus on where I'm not, you know, moving my head and my eyeballs around too much, but I also find it an amazing way to reflect and think and process feelings um, through art, through creativity. And I got this, I just wanted to kind of touch on how I'm focusing on myself and like I'm trying to make my space my own, you know. Um, but I bought a coloring book by the maker of this, or by the author, whoops, but... <laughs> Uh, I'm just dropping stuff over here. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm very clumsy. Um, I'm from another spiritual dimension, remember? <laughs> I'm just kidding. A little. Um, Green Witch Oracle. So I bought the Green Witch coloring book because I thought that sounds cool. And the first picture that I colored in it was this one. And I framed it. You guys, I framed it last night. <laughs> and I'm going to stick it on my wall. But isn't it beautiful? <laughs> So this is what I'm putting my energy into, you know, and I find it fulfilling. So what fulfills you? You know, what makes you happy and giggly when you put your energy towards it? That's what I'm focused on. Um, I also colored this one and I framed this one for my wall. So again, I'm surrounding myself with this type of energy right now. Um, I have, you guys are going to laugh. I have, ooh. I have all of these cards I want to stick all over my walls. <laughs> and I'm just going to surround myself with good energy. 
But anyway, that picture, if you're looking for a coloring book, Green Witch coloring book, very nice. Um, but I felt called to, I was framing that picture last night and I felt called to use this deck for Soul Tribe reading today. So we'll see what comes out. Um, I love this deck. I actually haven't... Ooh, you know what? We could try a spread. You know what? Let's do a spread. Um, let's do the... Mm, what's on the bottom? We have Cauliflower Transition. 11. Very interesting. We see a flame that's not lit. So you could be transitioning out of a connection. Um, it could be that you're going through some type of transition where you can't really connect with your inner spark. And we have memory 16 tower energy. Um, let's do, let's do the garden shed. Let's do the garden shed. All right. I don't do, like, I don't always do these spreads, but I felt called to do a spread with you guys today. I'm, I do a lot of intuitive reading, but I felt called to do, oh my gosh. We have a uh, dandelion, no, not dandelion, daffodil, what am I talking about? 38 hope. And I remember when I first started my channel, people were like, you're the Hope Reaper. <laughs> and somewhere along the way, you know, my Hope Reaper went away a little, <laughs> but it's coming back. Um, beautiful Hope, 38, 11. Oh, we have 11, 11, you guys. 38, 11, 11. Very interesting. Maybe you're seeing 11, 11. Um, that, that's interesting. Oh, what are you? What are you? With hope, it, in this deck, I don't, I don't take reversals in Oracle decks always. But with hope in reverse, it could be that you have, like I was just talking about how I, I lost my Hope Reaper a little. Um, but maybe you are someone who's recently had a lack of hope. Remember that cauliflower, the candle that's been blown out? Maybe your hope has... I don't know why I'm hearing diminished. Um, I think I've got Lord of the Rings on the brain as well. We have protection, nine. So you could be in hermit energy, discovering all your beautiful layers, you know, and maybe that, maybe you're spending some time reflecting, crying, processing emotions, exploring all the layers within yourself. You know, we see this grounded energy here. This is earth. The symbol is Earth. We also see Aries here. Um, but we see, you know, you trying to ground yourself. Maybe I'm seeing three of wands with this uh, focused on forward movement. Anyway, nine is, you know, it's where you kind of evolve into your higher self. It's the evolution of self. Um, it's hermit energy. It's I always see nine of pentacles. Anyway. We have Tranquility. So, again, I will, I'm, I'll, I don't take reversals in this deck, but I'll always talk about it if the energy feels right. We have on the bottom, um, Passion, Beetroot. Um, <laughs> I just heard, um... <laughs> I just heard bears, beats, or battle, whatever the order is, um, Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> bear, bears, beats, Battlestar Galactica. I'm thinking of Dwight from The Office. Anyway, um, so yeah, we have beetroot here, passion. And like I said, with that cauliflower, perhaps you're transitioning out of some type of situation, some type of, um, uh, conflict perhaps where your little spark went out you know and here we have that spark being relit here trying to find your passion another like grounded uh, earth energy 
So the first card we're going to get is the shovel, the deepest part that needs to come to the light. All right. So the shovel. So we're digging deep, you guys. <laughs> we're digging deep. So what needs to come to the light? What is the... What needs to come to light for you? I should say for us. <laughs> we have trust, and trust was in reverse. Um, again, I'm not taking reversals, but like I said, I'll always talk about it. <laughs> um, so we do have world energy here, trust. So it could be world in reverse. Perhaps there's your lack in closure about something. It's really interesting because I did a reading, excuse my rude reach, I did a reading yesterday and on the top of the pile, I left it there. The world was in the upright, but to me, because it's on the opposite side of me, it's in reverse. So that's interesting. That's an interesting synchronicity. Um, anyway, I am going to talk about it. <laughs> Ooh, missing something in love life. Uh, taking something for granted, taking things for granted. Very interesting. Missing peace. Uh, feeling like something is missing. Very interesting. So it could be that someone took you for granted. You know, it's interesting that I brought up that quote from that show. I forgot to pause it. Oh, I'm going to add it right now. Please, if there is ever, even for a fleeting moment, a tiny voice in your head, and that tiny voice is telling you, I deserve better. Listen to her. That's your partner. That's your real true love. And if you betray her long enough, you will lose her. Trust me, I'm still trying to get my back. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to... Do... Anyway. <laughs> there you go. Um... So trusting that inner voice, you know, if you feel like you deserve better, if you feel like you deserve a better job, if you feel like you deserve, just trust that voice within you that's telling you that something is missing. Like I said yesterday, I heard someone explain it very well that if you are stuck in a cycle of repeat, trying to make something work, trying to make something work, trying to make someone see your worth, uh, that is, it means that thing is not aligned. It means that thing is not aligned with you vibrationally. And no matter how hard you try, it's not, it's in reverse here. It's not going to work. It's not going to, there's a lesson that needs to be learned. There's a cycle that needs to end, if that makes any sense at all. And you know, that doesn't just have to be love. That can be friendship. That can be a family, like a family relationship, a job. Um, anyway, um, it could also be that, you know, maybe you are looking over things that you should be showing gratitude for. Maybe there's things in your life that you're taking for granted, like moments where, you know, a dragonfly lands on you, or you see, you look up at the right moment to see a bird fly through the sky. That gratitude journal is making me realize all the little things I'm grateful for, the little moments in my everyday life, my interactions with my kids, um, even the lessons, like, even the lessons. Uh, so, you know, anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing with that energy. Um, let's continue on. <laughs> let's get rid of that world card. So this is, like we were talking about, this is the deepest part of you that needs to come to light. So it could be some type of cycle with world energy. Um, but let's have a look at the book. Take a look, it's in a book. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, you are cool. <laughs> so we have good luck, love, prosperity, reconciliation, success. Astrological signs, Scorpio. So it's talking about reconciling and mending bridges of trust. So perhaps you have a hard time trusting people. Perhaps you have a hard time, like maybe there are people in your life that... 
you need to mend things with. It could also be, I don't know why I'm hearing this, but you know, supporting bridges that no longer need to be supported. Like maybe there are some bridges in your life that need to come down, if that makes any sense. I'm hearing it. Um, so the deepest part that needs to come to light. Basil will indicate energies surrounding trust and the workings of relationships. Consideration and putting more into gaining harmonious ground are required. And although this does include romance, Basil is referencing any relationship or connection. Education and travel are all areas that are shining with positive vibes at the moment. Come on, Wally. <laughs> But be wary of being in situations or relationships that you are no, you know are not good for you. And that's why I was hearing that bridge thing. Because you could have bridges to people in your life that are not doing the bridge upkeep. You know, who are not helping you keep that bridge up. And you may be losing yourself trying to keep that bridge up. My cat is playing with something that's really loud, of course. <laughs> Um, but also mending or working on the relationships that do bring fulfillment to your life, that do align with you, you know, strengthening those bonds. I can use a perfect example in my life right now. Again, I'm neurodivergent. I don't do this to talk about myself. I do this to give you an example because I like to have a picture painted for me. Like when, a when I'm listening to a tarot reader, I love when they say, so for example, that could look like this. And then they give an example. But for, for me right now, you know, I keep saying it to you guys. I've been manifesting better relationships in my life, expecting it to come in a very certain way. Like maybe my mom, you know, suddenly realizing that she wants to heal and have a relationship. And I've been waiting for those types of manifestations to come in when the universe has been giving me other points of contact, other bridges that I should be working on. For example, my friendships. I'm working on, <laughs> I feel like I'm like, oh, anyway. <laughs> I feel like such an alien sometimes, but like right now I'm working on two friendships, which is huge for me. You know, it's huge for me. I don't... <sighs> Friendship is like a difficult thing for me. I've never understood it. I've never experienced like spiritual friendships, which is something that I'm experiencing right now. And so right now I'm letting the weaker bridges in my life, I'm letting them go and I'm focusing on mending the ones or building strong foundations in the bridges that fulfill me and bring me this sense of fulfillment and contentment, world energy um, and releasing, you know, Trust in reverse, releasing the cycles, releasing the people, releasing the places that no longer align for you. Because like I described yesterday, it's, it's like a light bulb moment for me in the last week. It's like such a light bulb moment that anything that is not vibrationally aligned for you and you're trying to keep in your life, you're trying to hold on, it's preventing you from rising. It's preventing you from elevating um, and raising your frequency. You know, and I feel like I don't know why I'm hearing all this stuff right now, <laughs> but I'm like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory right now. Give me that bubble drink. I want to, I want to rise. <laughs> Give me that drink. <laughs> anyway, if you like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, maybe you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, anyway, I want to meet the other people who are drinking the bubble juice, you know, <laughs> Who want to be elevated, um, not in a drug type of way. <laughs> anyway, I have no idea why I'm hearing all this stuff. Um, but yes, that's what we're seeing. So spirits saying that's, you know, that that's what needs to come to light. What bridges are you doing too much upkeep on that lead to nowhere? Now I'm hearing that song, A Bridge to Nowhere, and you're getting there fast. Um, 
I'm also, it's really strange, but I'm also watching Anne of Green Gables right now, which I told you guys yesterday. Um, and I keep thinking about how there's this very long, it's called the Confederation Bridge, I believe. I should know that. Oh my gosh. Um, but there's a very long bridge leading into PEI, which is where uh, Anna Green Gables originated from. Anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. I sure do love you, Soul Tribe. <laughs> I really do. All right, so now we're going to look at the hoe. <laughs> that sounds so funny. Something that requires turning over and thinking about the hoe. So what do you need to turn over and think about? What do you need to... I'm hearing that word percolate. What do you need to kind of sift through, you know? What do you need to not dig deep into, but turn things over and see what comes of it. The hoe. Oh, we have success on the bottom. Judgment energy. Beautiful. Releasing lower vibrational energy. Remember I said I was seeing elevation and now I'm seeing the judgment card in the light seers tarot where, you know, there's that release happening. Anyway. Uh, the hoe. Show me the hoe. <laughs> Show me that hoe. <laughs> Why does that sound so funny to me? Because I'm childish. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to take that one. And I'm going to put these back. I'm going to put these back. That was the one that kind of came out in my hand. So we have cleansing here. So perhaps, you know... You need to work on cleansing your energy, cleansing your space. Um, it's interesting because I just did an order for, I just treated myself <laughs> to intention candles and fancy, not fancy, pretty sage, you know, rainbow sage and stuff <laughs> um, to cleanse my space. So yeah, maybe work on, maybe there's something in your life that needs cleansing, that needs healing. So right away I'm seeing, um, I believe these are both fire energy, these symbols. Fire? Yes, fire. So lots of fire here, Aries. Um, but I'm seeing, you know, star energy, uh, star card energy, so healing. So perhaps they're... Are certain things in your life that you're supposed to be looking at right now perhaps things that you have hope for perhaps you know you're losing hope for some things something that requires turning over and thinking about perhaps your healing journey we have confidence courage protection sensuality sexuality and it's on page 44, if that's symbolic for anyone. So this is something you need to, what, what was I saying about the hoe? Something that requires turning over and thinking about. What to do next is something that needs focus under the influence of tarragon. It will often indicate what work needs to be done to align the physical with the spiritual. A gift could be coming your way soon and a relationship will step up a level. Look at what can be redone, redone if given extra care to grow again, or if bringing it back into your life will serve you in a positive way. Tarragon also highlights plagiarism or taking inspiration without credit. So if you're someone who's been kind of imitating someone else or doing some type of plagiarism, you know, maybe you want to mull that over, I will tell you that I know for a fact... <laughs> That if you intimidate, intimidate, that was weird. If you imitate someone else, remember what I was talking about yesterday, I think, being your true authentic self, that's the only way you're going to call in the people that are meant to be aligned with you, who are meant to be your soul tribe. Um, I can use tarot as an example, you know, if you are imitating another tarot reader, all that's going to do is bring in the wrong the wrong, like you're not going to attract in the people you're meant to be attracting in. Because if you're imitating someone else, you're not truly connected to your source within. You're imitating someone. 
Um, it's the same for, you know, people who, from what I understand, people who put messages out there that they think people want to hear rather than reading the energy and actual cards will maybe bring you like short term, like you'll have one video go viral, but that's not going to bring you long term stability. So with this star card, you know, maybe you are looking, maybe you are imitating someone, maybe you are, and I don't mean in you're copying them type of way, but maybe you idolize someone, maybe you've put someone on a pedestal and in a way you're starting to behave like them or you're trying to be like them. Um, spirits saying, you know, that won't bring the energy that you need into your life. You need to be your true authentic self. Uh, there also is this energy of, it talks about a relationship. So it could be that, you know, this shovel is unearthing a connection, whatever type of connection that you're going to have to think about. Do you still want it in your life? You know, maybe you are someone who is struggling right now, knowing when to let go of people or when to let go of friendships or when to hold on because the star card can talk about holding on. So I feel like, you know, turning over and examining the things that you're holding on to really tightly and some of the things you need to release. Um, anyway, that's what I'm hearing with that. Um, so yeah, let's go to the next one. You have lots of greenery coming out. There are cards with color in this deck. <laughs> the pest control, possible ways to rid yourself of the problem. Okay, pest control. Well, we do have cleansing on the bottom, you know, and I was talking about cleansing your space. Um, interesting. Pest control. What do we need to hear? Pest control. We have desire, which is three. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing here. First of all, Ouija, doesn't that look like an Ouija thing? Um, this is more earth energy. Three in reverse. So it could be that you're struggling with your own. Again, I'm just intuitively reading this before I begin. But I feel like something that is preventing you from growing um, that needs to be removed from your life is Empress energy in reverse, which means to me, look, green again, interesting. Um, what I'm hearing, I'm seeing Empress in reverse, it's three. Empress in reverse, so it feels like Empress in reverse, that something that is causing lack of growth and lack of movement in your life could be distorted empress energy. So you could be someone who's struggling with your self-esteem. You could be struggling with knowing your worth. You could be struggling with allowing what's energetically aligned, like we've been talking about. Maybe you're struggling with it allowing to come to you and not chasing after it. Um, that's a huge, like huge lesson that, you know, I'm still constantly learning is about attracting things in rather than chasing after what eludes us or what isn't aligned with us. Um, so anyway, I do feel, I'm feeling very strongly this energy of Empress in reverse with that. Um, I feel, let me just look at, I'm not looking at the card, I'm looking at this. Possible ways to rid yourself of the problem, learning how to love yourself, learning that you are the empress, that you know, you're one of a kind, you're irreplaceable, and that everything you need will come to you. I feel nurturing yourself, you know, taking care of yourself is important here to rid yourself of any problems in your life right now. I'm actually feeling called to look at... Empress in reverse. See, lack of self-worth, clingy, clinging on to things that, you know, don't want to be clung, like don't want to hold on to you. 
So it does feel like you need to work on that, you know, your own self-worth, your own self-confidence, treating yourself like that empress, treating yourself to sage bundles and <laughs> intention candles or whatever you desire as an empress, you know? <laughs> Don't wait for someone else to treat you like the empress. You need to believe and embody that you are the empress um, and that will... The way we view and treat ourselves reflects on the people around us, okay? So, again, I'm thinking of that line from that show, You, um, that your true love is actually yourself. And I feel that you need to reconnect with that desire for yourself, um, is what I'm seeing. Anyway, <laughs> a lack of progress in love. So maybe, you know... You're focusing too much on the lack of progress in love in the, in the manifestation form that you want it to take. It could be that you have love. I'm thinking of, you know, love actually. Love actually is all around. And maybe, you know, you have to start seeing love in your life in different ways. Again, we've put romantic love on a pedestal. Um, all green. Interesting. So let's see what that card says. It's funny because I was like, I'm not going to take reversals. <laughs> and then I'm feeling, I'm just feeling the reversal energy. Lust, renewal, recovery, love, fertility. And like I said, chasing after what eludes you. Sometimes I'm not, I don't, I am not meant for this muggle world. So words, you know. I don't use a lot of words. So when I say like to me a lot of the word a lot of words mean something very basic to me and that's what i realized when i realized i was autistic was you know for example the word excited means lots of things um oh, how do i describe this i made a tiktok once that described it perfectly um this says lust and, you know, lusting after things. I was saying chasing after things that elude you. I know that's probably not the same thing, but in my brain, they kind of resemble the same idea. Um, anyway. Uh, love is a flower of life and blossoms unexpectedly and without law and must be plucked where it is found and enjoyed for the brief hour of its duration. That's the quote. This is on page 14, you know, so what do you need to help yourself? You need to balance your feminine and masculine energies. You need to learn how to nurture and love yourself and feel confident in yourself. Um, and your worth and then you also need to balance that masculine energy where you have the confidence to take action and believe that you are worth the things that you want you know you believe that you know what you believe is your worth is what you deserve um anyway fulfillment in many area areas of your life can be found by working a little more on your current relationships overcoming challenges is indicated and new material gain and recovery are also shown. Lettuce helps us get better physically and emotionally. It asks that you watch the way you are caring for yourself, nurturing yourself, remember? And be careful about what it is you are focused on. Are your desires really serving your truth? And that's what I that's what that lusting, that chasing what doesn't want to be caught by you you know, is what you're chasing really serving your highest self and your highest path? Um, anyway, <laughs> I get so passionate. I can't help it. All right. The gloves. How can you protect yourself? I just heard the gloves are off. <laughs> How can you protect yourself? We have 14 temperance divination. Ugh. I'm sorry. I am sorry, but I love that. First of all, how can you protect yourself balancing your feminine and masculine energies? Temperance, being patient with yourself. Um, 
Anyway, that is interesting. I actually want to look at temperance in the tarot book now. So, temperance, perfect harmony, the art of not letting things get to you. And this allows you to achieve much progress in all areas you seek out to explore. The temperance cards suggest moderation and balance coupled with a lot of patience. So how can you, what was the question? The gloves, how can you protect yourself? Being careful and considerate with yourself and your decisions. Being patient with yourself about your growth. Um, what else do we have here? Careful and considerate with love. Being patient with love. Success from patient and moderation, slow and steady progress, diligent saving, slow and steady growth. And you know, sometimes the spiritual journey, it feels like you can't see any progress. And then it's funny because I was, I was saying the other day that when I do readings, I have very little memory of them. Like I did a reading yesterday, a love reading, and I couldn't remember any of it after I had filmed it. And I actually watch it back. And when I watch myself, I'm like, how do I know all that? Like, how do I, I don't even, I'm not consciously aware when I'm channeling what I'm channeling. And then I watch it back and it's like, oh my gosh, like I look at myself and I think like I, how far I've come over, you know, three years, four years. And you don't see that when you're in it, you know? That's why you have to be patient with yourself. Sometimes growth, you can't see it. Sometimes your spiritual growth, you go through lulls, you know? You go through times where you're seeing all these signs and synchronicities from your guides and you're feeling uplifted. And then you go through times where it's almost like your guides get really quiet and those are the tests for you. That's that test. Do you still have belief in it? Um, anyway, I have no idea why I'm going off like this. But how can you protect yourself? Divination, spiritually awakening. Um, I was talking about uh, like divination, divination things like intention candles. And, you know, maybe if you're into pendulums, uh, there's a crystal ball here. Yay, crystal ball. <laughs> It's amazing that that's still in one piece. <laughs> um, anyway, that's what we're that's what I'm seeing with that energy. So, you know, maybe invest in some things like evil eye, uh, divination product, like not products, but divination materials. Anyway. It doesn't have to be fancy either. Like when I first started, I was ex like, I had just like a small little handful of crystals and I loved them so. <laughs> and just a couple of tarot decks and I loved them so. <laughs> it doesn't need to be huge, you know. Protection from evil, evil eye. Uh, calm, calm, fear, abundance, strength, emotional balance, temperance. It's on page 38. Oh, and there's a quote by Audrey Hepburn. I love Audrey Hepburn. To plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. And why? Why is it so easy for us to believe in the concept of here's a seed, put it in the ground, water it, and it will grow into a beautiful flower. And it's so easy for us to trust that. But if, you know, if someone told me like years ago, Plant a pentacle, believe that you'll be a light worker or whatever. Um, water it with intention and belief and it will happen. I would have been like, you're crazy. <laughs> like, get out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of, is it Jack and the Beanstalk where the person buys magic beans from someone on the road? Anyway. You are the master of your own free will, aligned with the divine, and at present, energies are strong and deep within you. Yes! <laughs> to help change your destiny and meet challenges powerfully. Yeah! That's all it says. That's all she wrote. You know? So clearly you are already protecting your energy. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Is that all in the frame? Look at all this green. It's beautiful.
I was looking, I'm, I've started, I've started, um, <laughs> I've started uh, burning intention candles, which is something that I've never done before. Um, maybe once or twice, but it's interesting because the green candle, which look, ritual candles, all the colors, the green candle, which is for prosperity, fertility, luck, and balance, is the slowest burning one in my... I have five candles over on the side here that I'm burning. And the green one is the one that's taking the longest to burn. And I'm wondering if it has to do with that balance. Like, maybe it's symbolic of it takes time to find balance. The fastest one to burn was my pink one, Love, Friendship, Romance, Caring. And like I said, I'm sitting like intention candles, like I want a friend. <laughs> and I've got like people trying to be my friend. I've just been, I had to take those glasses off, you know? <laughs> All right. So what's the next one? The fertilizer. How can you improve your situation? How can you improve your situation? I don't know why I heard that. Um, we have 33 wholeness, bulk, bulk, blah, 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 black mulberry. Oh my gosh. Sign. I think that is magical because I was wondering where that was in this deck. That's amazing. Anyway, <laughs> mulberry, 33. So what is this again? The fertilizer. How can you improve the situation? And this is water energy. Interesting. 33 is also thirty-three is also um the master teacher, spiritual, wise, enlightenment, influence. So it feels to me like 33, how can you improve the situation by focusing on spirituality, on enlightenment, um, focusing on what influences are in your life, you know, what bad influences in your life, what is influencing you. Uh, what are you taking in that's influencing you, like on social media? Uh, you know, sometimes on TikTok, that algorithm can suck you. Like you click on one video having to do with something low vibrational and then all of a sudden you're in a reel of it. You know, it's like constant. So being very aware of what's influencing your thoughts um, <laughs> as you're listening to me influence your thoughts. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, little things seem like nothing, but they give peace. Like those meadow flowers, which individually seem odorless, but all together perfume the air. So again, the fertilizer. How can you improve the situation? Everything should be coming together at present in projects and plans. The completion of something is indicated with black mulberries. So listen, in the very very beginning of your reading what was the thing that was deepest down that we had to get the shovel to dig out <laughs> world in reverse you know and this shows completion um so working on completing cycles you know like I said that hot flash work on controlling what you can control and releasing the rest focusing on the things you have control over and knowing what you don't have control over, perhaps letting some of those bridges come down and stabilizing the ones that bring fulfillment into your life. Anyway, <laughs> I just have to laugh at myself sometimes the way that I like, ooh, I just, I go into it. <laughs> the completion of something is indicated with black mulberries and the energy of this fruit asks you to put your knowledge and skills to the test. Balance and stability are present. And from this foundation, balance is present. <laughs> and from this foundation, the possibilities are expanding. Setbacks, delays, and miscommunications are challenges to watch out for. And it's interesting because I've been talking about words. So 
I've been talking about, you know, how I am often like people misunderstand me because I have such a small knowledge of words and how they are. It's like, how can I explain it? Just like, I know I'm crying a little. Hang on. So I know there's a whole array of feelings and words to go with those feelings. And I really struggle with that as I'll say neurodivergent autistic person or someone who is an alien not meant for this world. Um, and it causes a lot of miscommunications in my life. Um, you know, the people who, the people who love me understand that about me. And they know that like some of the words I say, Like, my, my vocabulary is limited, especially when it comes to feelings. Like, I was tra talking about lust and, like, chasing after so something that eludes you. Um, This card, just this miscommunication card, it could be that you have problems, you know, communicating your thoughts and feelings. Um, oh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say about this communication card? Hang on. I think what I was going to say was just be on the lookout for these setbacks, these delays, these miscommunications, even from the universe, you know? Um, I find it, like, especially now that I'm, you know, people are watching me. I'll Like I said, I watched that reading I did yesterday back, and I'm, like, holding the Nine of Swords, and I'm calling it the Nine of Pentacles. And in my brain... It was the Nine of Swords and I was here, like I was channeling Nine of Swords energy, but my mouth kept saying Nine of Pentacles. Um, the other day I accidentally called, um, you know, to me, like followers, fans, subscribers, uh, <sighs> pledges, like all of these names for the social media, whatever. They all mean the same thing to me. And I accidentally used the wrong one in a reading yesterday. I used the word fans. And somebody told me, get off your high horse. Remember who you are talking about us like we're fans. And it's like, that is not what I meant. That's what I talk about, like how I struggle with miscommunication all the time. Um, I just use, you know, the wrong words for the wrong things. Um, anyway. I don't know where I was going with that. This is about fertilizing, though. Like, what can you do to fertilize this situation and make it work for you? So remember, there are going to be setbacks. There are going to be miscommunications with your spirit guides. Like I said, there are going to be times where your spirit guides go really quiet. And you're not seeing the same signs and synchronicities that you were seeing before. And that's kind of... There's a card called Bridge to Happiness, and that's where your guides kind of let you go to see. It's a test of your faith. It's a test of your belief in your own divinity, if that makes sense. Anyway, um, how can you improve your situation? Complete the things that need completing in your life. Um, I'm going to tell you a very valuable lesson I learned yesterday through a miscommunication with my partner. And I honestly, it slapped me in the face, the lesson so hard last night when I was looking at my gratitude journal and it was like, what lesson have you learned today? So what happened was yesterday morning, I had a disagreement with my partner. I was in my room and I was looking at all the things I never get done. Like I have little piles of things that I always mean to go back and deal with and then I don't do it. Kind of like sticking stuff on my wall. Like I keep saying I'm going to do it. And I was feeling some type of way about that yesterday morning. And I went downstairs and before I knew it, I was having an argument with my partner about the things that he doesn't do, the things that he puts off. And in the moment, I felt so justified, you know, in the moment I was like, 
I need you to do some of these things that you keep saying you're going to do. These things that you write down that you need to do. Like, and I was, I was projecting and I didn't see it in that moment. It took me all day to realize that before that argument happened, I was in my room thinking about all these things I needed to get done. And I went downstairs and projected that. And like, I, I realized that's how you can use people as mirrors. Like, why is that bugging me about that person? Because that's within me. I have that within me. Anyway, um, noticing cycles like that and, and working to break them, you know? Breaking cycles. This card right here. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> so I'm going to... I'm actually going to use tarot to confirm these cards now. Deep breath. <laughs> we have temperance on the bottom. That's beautiful. And look, this... <laughs> It's, this is a really interesting energy to me because this person is like, I'm like, I am Zen. I am at one. I am patient. Is it coming yet? <laughs> like their eye is open. Like, is it coming yet? <laughs> anyway, let's see what's, let's just get some confirmation on this energy. We won't take forever. We have Ace of Swords, Clarity, Breakthrough Moments. I was just talking about how I realized I just projected all over my partner. All right. So, the shovel. The part of you that needs to come to the light. So on the bottom, we have the Four of Wands, which is interesting because we started this reading with Cauliflower and 38, whatever that was. 11, 11. Now we have 11, like the Four of Wands, 11, 11 here. Very interesting. I'm hearing coming into union with your higher self is what I'm hearing. Um, but anyway, the shovel, the deepest part of you that needs to come to light. We have the Eight of Swords. So again, self, like this is just too much. Self-imposed prison, you know? What is holding you back that shouldn't be holding you back? All you have to do is... Like, this person is not trapped, you know? All this person has to do is stand up and they can get out of there. Their higher self is even saying, here's, here's some clarity. If you just get this clarity, you can break yourself free from this prison of self-imposed thoughts and fears. What is holding you down in lower vibrational energy, you know? Interesting. I'm just going to put it right on top. And two of wands. So it could be, um, it could be, I'm hearing like limiting beliefs that are holding you back. And this also has to do with cycles. Remember, this was in reverse, this 21. So it feels like there are things that you need to look at how you approach things. Are you approaching some things from a place of fear? Are you holding on to people and situations out of fear? You know, that eight of swords can be symbolic of someone who's in a really like I just think of my mother in a really unhappy job. Has the free will to leave, has the free will to make a resume and look for another job, but fear that ne you'll never find another job, fear that no one will hire you, fear that this fear that that keeps you trapped in that situation when you could just take off that blindfold and get up, you know. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm hearing with that. Perhaps you need to change your approach to this Eight of Swords energy. Eight of Swords, let's read it. The Eight of Swords is a feeling of being trapped and victimized, victimized in a prison of self-imposed thoughts. You have probably hand, hand oh my gosh, you have probably handed over your personal power to someone else and it isn't going so well. The good news is, is that you created this trap yourself and you have the ability to free yourself. And remember, we were talking about bridges. You know, maybe you gave your bridge away to somebody. Maybe you've been giving a powerful bridge away to someone who took that power from you and didn't, you know. Oh, anyway. 
feeling trapped, suffocated, dependence on job, can't change careers, fear of job changes, anxiety about money, can't see financial opportunity. So you could have, like we talked about it yesterday, fear-based thinking. It will swallow you up. I watched a video on manifestation and about how living in that vibration of fear will only manifest more fear and unhappiness anyway. <sighs> Something that requires turning over and thinking about. We have the Queen of Wands. Beautiful. So Queen of Wands is, it's so interesting because I started talking about perhaps imitating someone. You don't need to imitate anyone. You are the Queen of Wands. You have that energy within you. Um, I feel like you need to, this is saying you need to look at the power within you. You know, you don't need to imitate anyone else. You don't need to compare yourself to anyone else. The only person you should be comparing yourself to is yourself, your older self, like the past versions of yourself. Something that requires turning over and thinking about perhaps your own confidence, your own relationship with your own confidence. Perhaps you need to embody more of, you know, black cat energy, um, knowing your worth. You know, look at that fierce dragon that you've tamed there. It could be that, you know, maybe you were imitating someone else, another Queen of Wands. And you'll never embody that Queen of Wands if you're intimidating someone else. The Queen of Wands comes from within. The other thing I'm hearing, something that requires... I'm sorry I keep repeating the question, but that's how my brain works. Something that requires turning over and thinking about your connection with spirit, you know? Um, perhaps looking at things like are are the things in your life energetically aligned with you? And if they aren't, maybe it's time to let them go. You know, I always see the Queen of Wands as very connected to spirit. So maybe you need to kind of mull over and assess your situation with spirit and your belief in hope and things like that. Possible ways to rid yourself of problems. We have the Five of Wands in reverse. So very interesting because the Five of Wands is about conflict. It's about competition, you know, and your card that came out for this, Empress in reverse, the way to rid yourself of lower vibration and vibrational energy is to bring yourself out of it, to know your worth, um, have like learn how to love yourself, not having inner conflict with yourself, you know. Um, I'm hearing treating yourself like you like how you would treat a friend or a best friend. Treat yourself that way, you know. This five of wands is about perhaps there's conflict in your life that needs to be removed, you know, perhaps you do compare yourself to others. Um, like I said, you shouldn't be comparing yourself to anyone except past versions of yourself. You could have some inner conflict that you're struggling with that you need to resolve here. And again, you know, it's possible that if there are things in your life, five of wands, that are, like I said, it's it's like a repetitive cycle trying to get it to work, trying to make it align with you. That's a good indication that that energy is conflicting with your energy and it's not aligned for you at this time. At this time. It doesn't mean it never will be at this time. How can you protect yourself? We have the Queen of Pentacles. Beautiful. We have the Queen of Pentacles. Look at all this queen energy. Look at the little black kitties. Oh my goodness, there's kittens. There's three kittens. Anyway, maybe you should get a kitten. <laughs> maybe you should rescue a cat. Um, anyway, how can you protect yourself? Nurture yourself. Know your worth. Um, put energy into, you know, things that show you that energy back. Like your animals, your kids, your friends, your bit, like your, if you're, if you love your job, your business, 
focus on, you know, perhaps your job. Um, but I don't like that. I don't want you focusing on your job all the time. <laughs> How can you protect yourself knowing your worth? Oh my gosh, knowing your worth, Queen of Pentacles. Knowing that everything you need is within you. You have the potential to be your own provider, to care for yourself. And you know, right away, my ego's like, no you don't, no you don't, to me. And I'm, it's a struggle, you know. Um, I believe we all have that potential within us. And we do have the Page of Cups, so tapping into your creativity side, your creative side, look at this person painting. Um, how can you protect yourself following, follow your intuition, you know? Truly, Page of Cups, follow your intuition, believe in the impossible. Believe in that, you know, we were talking about believe that when you plant a seed, it's going to grow into a beautiful flower, trusting in that. Interesting. We have two cards for that one. So, Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. So this is how you can protect yourself. Just listen to this little blurb. The Queen of Pentacles depicts a level of success, prosperity, luxury, stability, and home abundance. She knows how and when to show love. Okay, be it domestically or sensually, do not mistake her for only being a homebody. Alongside these motherly attributes, she can also plan business ventures and execute her plans successfully. Beautiful. And Page of Cups, open to new ideas, especially the ones that stem from intu intuitive inspiration. So following your intuitive inspiration, following your gut, as I like to say. Um, it represents the unexpected inspiration that comes to us and the willingness to explore them. It symbolizes persistence as this is the only way you can make your dreams come true. Persistence. Be persistent. Be, be persistent. <laughs> you know, I can even like, I'm thinking about... Even intention candles, like I've, I've never lit them before and I was watching a thing the other day on how to do it, um, how to set the intentions, how often to do it. And immediately I was like, you have to have persistence, you know, because it says to do it like three, six or nine days. Um, and right away my ego was like, nine days, like I got to commit to nine days. <laughs> That's the... That's the wrong attitude, Kelly. That's the wrong attitude. <laughs> Again, we're the only ones stopping ourselves from our manifestation. I was thinking about it last night. Like I could, I'm like, I'm someone who wants to be healthier. I'm someone who wants to, you know, spend more time uh, working out. <laughs> And I was thinking about it last night. It's like I'm waiting for some magical fairy to come down and make me some kind of workout queen. Um, I'm the only one stopping that from happening because I'm continuing to eat chocolate bunny and not use my treadmill, you know? Anyway, uh, let's see how you can improve the situation. Very interesting. Five of swords in reverse. So five of swords in reverse. How can you improve the situation? Stop stop self-sabotaging yourself. Stop worrying about what other people think. About what others think. Stop trying stop letting others cause inner conflict within you. We have the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Swords. So really quick, this is runner chaser energy. So I feel for how can you improve the situation? Stop chasing what doesn't want to be chased, you know? Um, interesting. Five of Swords in reverse. I'm being called to use a different book for some reason. I don't know why. We're going to find out together. Five of Swords. I just saw it. I don't know why I'm being called to this book. So, 
How can you improve the situation? The reversed energy of the Five of Swords suggests that you might be stuck reliving a fight or an argument and unable to let it go. If you are, is it truly serving you to rehash it? What do you need to find closure around a difficult feud, even if the other person is unwilling to admit fault? Alternatively, if you were victorious but now can now can see an error in your ways, how can you make amends? And it's so interesting because this card talks about ending cycles and this is the card that made me cry and tell you about the fight I had <laughs> where I projected onto my partner. And it's exactly that. If you were victorious, I th not that I'm saying I was victorious, that's not how I was seeing it. I was seeing it as, you know, I was right in, oh, it sounds so silly. I was right in arguing, you know, because there are things that he's, you know, writes down that he'll do that he's very slow to do. But again, I by the end of the day, I saw a huge error in my ways and I realized it and I tried to make amends, you know, and even now just telling you about it, emitting that shadow, shining a light on that shadow turns it into power. You know, so next time I'm probably going to stop myself when I feel myself projecting. I think a lot of people project and don't realize they're doing it. Um, and if you're a, if you're high priestess, if you can see through the veil, you can see when it's happening. And that's except I didn't see it in myself yesterday. Anyway, I just think it's interesting how that energy came out because that that card was about ending cycles, you know, like, what are you, is there something, a cycle that you need to release? Is there an argument you keep having even with yourself that you need to let go of? Um, anyway, so let's get, I just kind of want to get you affirmations, if I'm being honest about how awesome you are. So is that what I want to do? Or do I want to get you, no, I want to get you one of these. People used to say, why are you talking to yourself? <laughs> okay, so we have action leads to success. So again, I was saying we're the only ones stopping our own manifestations by not taking action towards them. Anyway. Now I know I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to my higher self or I'm talking to my guides, whatever. Oh. Oh. I was just talking about shining a light on our shadows and how we turn it into power when we do that. I can't believe this card came out. Anytime I see this card, you guys know I have an emotional reaction to this card. Um, uh, 33. Ah, uh, like the synchronicities, you can't ignore that, my friend. You cannot ignore, just listen, everything that I was just channeling has to do with this card. And it's on page 74, which is 11. Do you see a theme? <laughs> do you see a theme? I see a theme. Hang on. 11, faith, humanitarian, accepting, tolerant, intuitive. What's interesting is weakness, codependent, manipulative, oversensitive. And I was just thinking like 1111, counterpart energy, codependency. Anyway, Jaguar represents the shadow, the subconscious aspects of ourselves we push away. Five of sorts. Carl Jung, Jung says these aspects usually stem from situations we encountered as children that led us to feel shame, unworthiness, and abandonment. We then live out these programmed beliefs as adults. Jaguar comes to speak to us about nourishing our shadow. In this image, we see her drinking from the well of wholeness. The well in this image, inspired by... I don't know how to say that. Jungian? Analyst Marion Woodman 
is our place of nourishment and absolute wholeness. Water is where all life comes from. Without it, we have no vitality. Many of us ignore and starve our shadow aspects because they cause us so much pain. We push them away and we deeply criticize them. Eight of Swords, Five of Swords. We chain our jaguar shadow and confine her to the furthest part of the backyard of our minds. She howls and cries for nourishment, yet we still ignore her. In her banishment, because of the lack of love, her power grows uh, as the master of self-sabotage. Ironically, if you would begin a relationship with her, you'd find that she's your greatest asset and can lead to fulfilling your life's purpose. Oh, why am I having such an emotional reaction to this card? Every time, every time. I think it's because <clears throat> I've found my jaguar. <laughs> I know I say it funny. I found my jaguar and like just the image of a chained up animal, like with, I can see ribs. Um, it's just heartbreaking to me. And it just, the jaguar also makes me think of the queen of swords. And until you nourish this jaguar, you know, it's hard to be your true authentic self. Um, anyway. Funny that we instinctively banish her. Jaguar's medicine asks, asks you to create a self-talk relationship with yourself and to ride the wave of hurt within. Every time a painful feeling arises, you must now tell yourself, I'm right here to feel this with you. I accept this uncomfortable feeling and I will ride it out with you. I am here to feel this with you. If you do this, the emotion will always detox out and dissipate leading to a much quicker healing, but you must be strong and endure the pain. Commit to riding the waves of emotion together within yourself. This is the nourishment your jaguar shadow requests. If you witness her, she will start showing you a new and indestructible power within. Your shadow... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like kind of laughing and crying. Your shadow is where your diamond lives. Truth. Truth. <laughs> oh, truth. Um, anyway. I love that that card came out. I love it. And now I'm going to tell you how amazing you are. Because <laughs> you are so awesome. You're so awesome. Who's awesome? You're awesome. <laughs> You're awesome possum. You're an awesome possum. <laughs> Oh, yes. I will not let anyone scare me out of my full potential. Yep. And that's what lower vibrational people want to do. <laughs> and I'm not saying they do it intentionally. <laughs> Positivity, confidence, and persistence are key in life. So never give up on yourself. Page of Swords, or not Page of Swords, Page of Cups. It said, persevere. Never stop believing in your dreams. I'm hearing Don't Stop Believing, that song. I am, in my, I am my own experiment. I am my own work of art. Note to self, you are amazing. <laughs> you are amazing. Never bend your head. Always hold it high. Look the world straight in the eye. Oh, I should mention, that's Helen Keller, that's Madonna, Nicki Minaj, Khalid, is that how you say it? You are a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. Truth, you are. You're my ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I cried all over. <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. I'm sending you lots of love and light, and I will talk to you soon, my soul family. <laughs> Bye.